thank you so much, uh, everybody, for being here. And I hope you had some good coffee, and I hope you're enjoying the conference. So today, I'm here to talk about uh, the business of UX and uh, try and maybe uh, talk through some of my experiences running, happening, and dealing with a lot of business folks and talking about business day in and day out. So let's maybe uh, go through it and get into business and see uh, what happens. Yeah, just to quickly introduce myself, uh, I'm Rohan. I'm uh, the uh, founder of Happening Design. We're a global UX design studio. If you've seen my face around a couple of times at the conference, that's also because I'm one of the co-chairs at UX India. I've been uh, a co-chair for a while. And uh, it's an interesting time to be here. Never done a keynote uh, as a, a co-chair of UX India. So uh, this is definitely a, a first for me. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, we are happening. And uh, over the, if you've been here the last two days, a lot of people have approached me and asked me what's happening. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been uh, trying to kind of talk to everybody about uh, what we do and so on. So it's a great opportunity for me to maybe just say it once and for all. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we are a global UX design studio. And uh, we create uh, digital products uh, and experiences for companies uh, who are doing some very exciting stuff. And yeah, happening is who we are. So uh, a bunch of things that we do basically to add more value to our clients in terms of UX design, research, brand design, uh, front-end development, and so on. Uh, quickly, a little bit more, uh, talking about the impact. Uh, we have uh, a presence uh, across the world, largely uh, in India and in uh, North America. And uh, we work with some very exciting clients across a bunch of industries. Yeah, some of the uh, industries we've worked with and some of the clients largely across uh, banking and financial, insurance, and uh, retail, and uh, whatnot. I won't bore you more with, uh, uh, with happening, but uh, let's talk about the business of UX. That's why I'm here. Uh, so today's uh, talk, uh, today's my keynote is all about uh, just giving some exposure into understanding the business side of things and understand uh, the impact investing in UX brings, especially if there are any business folks around here or UX designers who are getting into leadership positions, this might be pretty useful for you. So for the first and uh, the most obvious question, uh, why should designers care about business goals and outcomes? So as designers, we already have a lot on our plate. We talk to users, we hear out their problems, their pain points, their needs. We deal with developers, we deal with marketers, and we deal with whatnot. And I'm now adding really one more thing onto your plate, which is to deal with business folks as well. Uh, but honestly, I think this will be helpful. Uh, this will help you improve your process, and this will help you create some more impact. Uh, first thing, uh, why you should be doing this is to be more business efficient. Uh, if you're wondering, uh, most businesses out there, the only thing that they care about would be to be more efficient. Uh, that's why we keep hearing about layoffs and hiring and investments and whatnot. So, uh, be business efficient. The second thing is to drive business success. So when I say business success, uh, there are a lot of business goals that the entire company aligns to. And uh, for each company, success would mean a completely different thing. So it helps to understand what is successful for your company and what does success mean for your company. And it's not always about generating more revenue or more sales or engagement or whatever, right? There are companies that do some very interesting stuff where uh, their goals would be completely different versus uh, a company in the same industry which might have goals that are uh, completely different, basically. Right? The third thing is to show some uh, tangible evidence. As UX designers, I think we have a great superpower, which is to visualize things, envision things, uh, put things together uh, in a very uh, sort of a beautiful way, and create experiences that really excite a lot of people. So uh, showing that and showing the process behind that is very important. And lastly, this is something that I see many designers not doing, but in our industry, being a design studio in the consulting space, it becomes extremely important for us, especially when there are long-term engagements and bigger projects. It's very, very critical to show how your designs have made a positive impact on the company or on the business or the team that you're working with. Like I said, could be anything, but needs to be measured and needs to be uh, shown to uh, the respective people. Uh, one thing before we kind of get 
uh, talking too much in the business terms. I would like to point out that good design is good business. And this has been proven multiple times. It's not something new. And you must have seen this quote probably uh, a dozen times. So when I speak from uh, the business side, it doesn't mean that I'm asking you to get too much into the business side of things. But uh, keep in mind that we are all designers and we want to do good design. But that also means uh, that it's going to be good for the business. So how do you do this? Right. The first thing is uh, obviously about alignment. Uh, as designers, your team or you might have uh, a certain set of goals right? that you would like to do uh, with your designs. Uh, you have a particular process that you follow. Whenever you do research, there are uh, a set of things that you would like to achieve. Similarly, when you create some wireframes, there are certain things that you would like to achieve. So uh, it's important to embrace business goals. Uh, and this, there, is a, there is a disconnect here because not many people get involved uh, in this process where uh, you don't understand or you don't get to see uh, what the business goals are of a company. So it's important to reach out and try and get yourself aligned to, uh, aligned to the direction where the company is headed. Uh, second thing is integrating them into your design process. So don't keep your stakeholders in the dark. Involve them in the process. Talk to them about what you would like to do and how you would achieve it and how it is good for business. The third thing, which not many would like, but it is to treat your stakeholders like you do your users. So if you're one of those uh, designers who doesn't do user research, then this is bad news for you. But if you are somebody who treats your users well and listens to them, listens to what they have to say, and empathizes with them, uh, it's extremely important to treat your stakeholders also in a similar way. The last point is business-backed design decisions. So obviously, we have all heard of what design decisions are. But when I say business-backed design decisions, it is essentially, I'm trying to say, include uh, your stakeholders in the process and have some business uh, thinking behind the design decision that you take. So if you're changing something that would affect a bunch of things in your flow, it is important to uh, measure or it is important to consider uh, what is the impact that the business is going to have because of it. And this is usually a back and forth discussion. It never happens in, at once, but it's important to uh, do that. A uh, couple of things I would like to talk about, which is very important as we go, uh, the metrics that you should actually care about. And there's plenty if you just Google, or I, I see so many people talking about AI. So if you use AI, you're going to get a list of probably 1,000 metrics, and you could probably create 1,000 more. But I would just like to touch upon this as we kind of uh, go forward. Uh, why do business stakeholders not value UX? This is something uh, I've been asked a lot. And this is something that I have seen in the uh, process myself when we uh, talk to clients, when we talk to prospects, or when we speak with uh, stakeholders in a particular company as well. Firstly, uh, there's no buy-in from the executives. So that immediately uh, is a big uh, sort of a a stepping stone in your entire process. If you don't have a buy-in, you're going to spend the entire time just fighting, 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 and trying to just bring everybody together. And this buy-in doesn't happen magically. Uh, there is a way to do things, and I will talk about it as well. But it is important to um, highlight uh, what you bring onto the table. And there will be people who don't understand what you bring onto the table, but that effort is needed. Uh, second is misalignment of goals. It's happened to me a lot uh, when somebody talks to me about a problem that they're facing with their business or their product. I immediately have a thousand ideas. I immediately know that these are the uh, 10 things that I need to do to get to a point where I need to get to, uh, which would be success for me. But to my client, that is not success. Or to my customer, that is not success. Uh, high revenue, like I said earlier, might not be success for everybody. right? So uh, it's important to understand the goals and their thinking. Uh, the third thing is uh, low stakeholder involvement in the process. And this is something that we all do. Uh, we do all the research. We create something that's beautiful, usable, blah, blah, blah. And we just go and present it to people. That will not work. That is not how our process is designed as well. We need more involvement from the stakeholders. And that's usually expensive uh, when you get more and more people involved, but decide uh, at least 10 minutes of their time for a small thing might really help and might really help you align with where they are headed. 
Uh, poor communication, I think we are good at communication, I believe, at least as designers. But if you're not able to communicate, that is definitely uh, a step back for you. So uh, find ways to be more uh, communicative through your decks or presentations, prototypes, uh, sketches, whatever it may be. Uh, you don't know how or what to measure. These are two completely different problems. You can measure something, but it could be a wrong metric for you. And uh, in many cases, it's a trial and error. But nevertheless, it is important to know what you want to measure and how you want to do it. Uh, let me now talk uh, a small problem from the stakeholder side. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, when they invest in a big design team or when they invest in putting together uh, a design team to do a specific thing, they expect instant results. So it's important to manage expectations. It's important to uh, be upfront about what you're going to deliver and how you're going to do it. Lastly, uh, stakeholders are clueless and unwilling to experiment. This is, again, an educational process that you need to take them through. But this is something, uh, as designers, unfortunately, the process is still not known to many business folks or many operational folks or many finance folks. So it's important to talk about what you're doing however ridiculous that might be. <laughs> uh, question, so how do you make your business stakeholders happy? Uh, plenty of ways, but let me talk about the design aspect of making your stakeholders happy. Uh, it is basically, this is my belief that bringing together user satisfaction with business success will most likely make your stakeholders happy. And this is something that I've observed in a lot of the projects that I have done and my studio has done. Uh, the next point and the most important point is uh, showing the return of investment. And uh, if you just Google this or if you uh, try and read up more about this, this is probably one of the first things that you will see. The return of investment in UX design is $100 for every $1 invested. I think that is a very big lie. I don't, I don't know what's the methodology behind this uh, or how they got to that or if it's still valid, but I definitely don't think that's true. And there could be multiple ways to show ROI. It's not necessarily through dollars. It's not necessarily through time. It could be in terms of many things, right? It could be one little enhancement I've seen uh, has solved um, a huge problem uh, for customers, right? And that could result in uh, quite a few things. Could be uh, uh, lesser time, higher engagement, whatever, whatever. A second thing, uh, illustrate savings. So the reason I talk about this is uh, it's important to show uh, what you're investing in and why you're investing in it. Uh, and this happens a lot with uh, developers, I suppose. A, a good example would be when you have something really crazy that you would like to develop because you think your users would find it delightful and uh, user-friendly and whatnot, but that could be very expensive to develop. So it is important to show uh, your success in just taking the right calls and in just prioritizing what you need to do first and then what you need to do next. A third thing, link UX enhancements to um, revenue, market share, customer lifetime value increases, and whatever else you would like to. So uh, many cases, we find usability flaws. We do a lot of testing. We do, uh, we do a lot of user research. And we decide that, OK, these are a few things that I would like to do to improve my user experience. But what I'm proposing here is to link this, these enhancements or link these, whatever, however small or big they might be, to something uh, that would help the business grow or that would help the business uh, step forward in a particular direction. Uh, fourth thing, uh, highlight reduction. So uh, there are not only uh, results from your metrics in a positive uh, sort of a view. You could also talk about uh, different aspects that really helped your user experience in terms of getting a better net promoter score or talking about customer acquisition and whatever else. But it is important to talk about uh, the entire aspect of uh, what you would like to uh, highlight uh, when, you, when you execute something or when you build something. Uh, then you have uh, predictive analytics. So analytics is something that uh, it's, a, it's a tool that we all have access to, but I don't think we leverage it enough. And if we have a little bit of a skill to analyze data, a little bit of a skill to understand what you are showing and what has happened in the past, it's going to help you uh, basically take better design decisions and basically help you understand 
what the business problem is. And it is a possibility that your business stakeholders themselves are not doing this, but just by doing this small little thing uh, is going to help you a lot. Uh, the reason I put this, which is a well-known fact, and uh, most of you must have seen this, but the reason I put this is to basically reassure you that at the end of the day, if you design something that makes your user experience better, it is going to help your business, it is going to help you, it's going to help your business stakeholders. But the way you do it and the process in which that you do is not just design-driven, but also uh, very should be very business focused and should be, uh, you should be in a position to understand what's happening on the business side and then take a decision. So how do you align your uh, UX goals with your business goals? And you could have your own process. And if you see at a high level, this is sort of your design thinking process where you uh, analyze, then you have a definition phase, then you have a collaboration phase, you have a prioritization phase and so on and so forth. But this is something that I've put together based on my experience. It could be different for you, but this is something that's worked for me. So first is understanding business objectives. So step one, I see 80% of the people fail. Because why should any business team involve you in their uh, objectives or in their goal setting or in their vision? Right? So there is a high chance that they're going to say, this is something that's probably not needed for you. Just focus on getting this feature done or this requirement done. But the secret here to understanding business objectives is to demonstrate ROI, is to demonstrate your impact, is to show something tangible. That's the only way they're going to start taking you seriously. And that's the only way you will get access to a lot of this business information, which many designers today might not have in your own company. The second is to define clear and measurable goals. So setting clear goals is easy, but how do you set up a goal which is clear and measurable? And we spoke about this, measure the right thing and know how to measure it and continue to measure it for a long time. There are very few metrics that would probably give you immediate results. Most of them take uh, a long time to give you the impact that you need to give. Then collaborate with them, have a shared goal, motivate them to be a part of the process, motivate them that this goal is going to get you to where you are. And I have been in cases where I've been able to influence my business stakeholders to include some of my goals as a part of their uh, goal setting framework because there is a direct impact to uh, their ultimate goal, which is usually ringed to sales, engagement, or revenue. Then you have prioritization and developing a shared vision, which I think we all know about. Then aligning your UX and business KPIs. So this is important. Uh, whenever you design something, uh, you have a KPI for it. But will this KPI uh, help the business uh, get future funding or get um, more freedom for you? Right. So this, this could be important in that sense. And seven is basically demonstrating whatever you've done so far. And eight, uh, which is something that we all love to do and which we do every day, is continuous validation and adaptation. Uh, so my uh, thinking where business and UX come together, it's all about innovation, growth, and competitiveness. So let me quickly touch upon it and uh, see if that adds uh, value to it. So uh, first thing uh, is innovation. And if you've been a part of any large companies, you would have seen uh, huge teams that are completely focused on innovation. And here are a couple of things that you could do uh, to improve uh, your user experience and be innovative in the same process for the betterment of your business. One is by solving real-time problems and rapidly prototyping them. I think rapid prototyping is a lost art these days, although you have these great, amazing tools that really help uh, make things quicker for you. Back in the day when we were just sketching and doing paper prototypes, it was a huge hassle. But even with Figma and Sketch and whatever else, it's still, I feel, uh, we are not tapping into that great tool to show the quick value and to show something that's real. I don't think there are so many professions that can immediately convert an idea into something tangible and show it immediately to their 
uh, stakeholders. The second thing is explore extraterrestrial <laughs> lands. And this, the reason I say this is because when you get into a team, there is immediately a boundary drawn around you. You are just in that boundary, focused on one particular flow, focused on one particular product, focused on one particular platform, and whatever else. But it is important to sometimes step out of that. It could be, if you're working in some place for a long time, that could be your comfort zone. But get out of it, look, look around, see what others are doing, uh, see how the industry is functioning, see how your domain works, and look at things that are completely out of your picture and see whether that could add value to your business. Uh, the third thing is solving some of the significant problems your business faces. So our user research process generally revolves around customer needs and customer pain points. But it's important to also understand some of the problems the businesses faces. And these problems generally do impact the UX teams and the design teams. So before it impacts us, it's important to understand what they are and maybe look at how you can add value there and how you can solve them. Lastly, uh, we're talking about AI today, uh, the whole day and yesterday, and we're going to be talking about AI tomorrow, and we're probably going to be talking about AI next year. So there is a very clear pattern here where the user preferences and behaviors are completely changing. Uh, just like how we say Google it, I've heard people say, look it up on ChatGPT or whatever the other AI tools are. So preferences are changing. So if you're going to go to your business stakeholders for some funding or for uh, you know, convincing them about a particular thing, and if you're still behind, you have clearly not understood where the business is headed, or you've clearly not understood uh, what are the issues the business are failing, uh, for, uh, facing. And this could be something that defines how well you do things. And this could be something that clearly defines your user experience. Uh, the second thing I would like to talk about, one was innovation, which I just spoke about. The second thing I would like to talk about is competitive advantage. Uh, this comes in handy in all, almost all use cases whenever you create something new. And to many UX designers, when you speak about competition, it's just about doing some simple analysis. It's about uh, doing some comparisons. And it's about finding gaps or finding things that are missing between what you have versus what they have, or looking at what you might have in the future and what they have right now. Right? These are generally some comparisons that we make. But building a competitive advantage is not easy. And there are companies that have done this that have become huge success stories, you know, billion dollar businesses just because of one competitive advantage. How you could do this, according to me, could be in these couple of ways. One is to prioritize user satisfaction and delight. So we have stages, right? We focus on needs first, we focus on wants first, and then we talk about delight if we have the time or if somebody permits us to think about it. It's important to factor in delight in everything that you do and look at how you can give that additional bit of thrust uh, to your designs to make it uh, have some edge over your competition. So my point here is don't just look at solving the basic needs. Uh, however small or big your project is or your problem is, look at giving some delight to your users. The second thing is to build recall and to have a sort of a unified expression of your brand. So we all talk about design systems a lot, right? And I've seen products that have extensive design systems, which is such a headache just to understand what the hell it is and how it functions. But I've seen very few use cases where I've seen these huge design systems talk about values of their brand, talk about the process that their brand was built through, and talk about how they want to uh, build recall, right, and so on and so forth. So it's important to understand those aspects. And if you don't have uh, sort of a great branding in place, I think it's important to establish some facts before you go ahead and design something. And that is definitely going to be help you uh, build a competitive edge. Third thing, this is something that the reason I put this in is in many of our processes these days, 
it starts with inspiration, which is a great thing. And there have been many great people who have stolen ideas and become huge successes. But to all my teams, I encourage them not to do that first. I try and give them the time to experiment and fail. Just because I want to encourage fresher ideas, I want to encourage crazy ideas, I want to encourage failed ideas, basically. So I don't want people to build something similar to the next guy. That is something that we always try. Lastly, I spoke about AI previously. It's very important to leverage that. Uh, if you're talking about AI and you still don't understand what it is, it's high time for you to at least understand some basics and understand how AI functions these days. So what does good design lead to for the business at the end of the day? And this is a proven fact again. Good design leads to higher sales, higher engagement, and higher customer retention. But all this is possible only if you show it. <laughs> only if you show your business stakeholders. Only if you convince them that this has gotten you some positive impact for your company, and this has helped you succeed. So uh, let me talk about some quick examples uh, from uh, my experience, uh, how we've done uh, how we've helped some of, our some of our clients grow and how we were able to uh, get some good business value out of some of the decisions that we've taken in the design process. So uh, this is um, a 5G platform which provides 5G connectivity for large-scale enterprises. And there's a, a physical a hardware aspect to it, and there's also a software aspect to it. What you're seeing is the software side of things. So what we have done in this process, which really helped this particular company have a competitive advantage, and which really helped the business position this product in a certain way that they ensure success. So one is we understood what 5G is. We understood the domain. We understood the metrics. We understood how the system works. And we, un we also looked at other industry 4.0 technologies. And we understood the entire realm of telecom and connectivity. So that helped us align very closely with the business stakeholders. The moment we started speaking their language, they knew we were the right people to talk to. The second thing, 5G is still relatively a new field. Uh, we are just getting 5G connectivity on our phones that are the modern ones. So it was important for this particular product to be future ready. So we took in many factors uh, while we designed this product to be future ready. I don't want to get into the details. I don't think we have enough time. But uh, it's important to understand where the industry is headed or where the company is going in the future and try to consider some of those use cases in your designs as well. The third thing, value-added design and UX. So when we, spoke to, uh, when we spoke to them, when we spoke to the leadership, we spoke to them about not just design and wireframes and UI and all those things. We spoke to them about how their uh, product could be engineered in a better way which would ultimately give them a better experience to their end customers. So it was not just UX, but it was also a lot of other things that we were able to add value in just because we understood what they were doing and where they are headed. The fourth thing is a shared product vision. We immediately got aligned to what their existing vision was for the company when they founded it. And we continued to build on it. So that was something that was very successful. And lastly, we worked very closely with their marketing team to help them project this experience as a great selling point. So even today, after a couple of years, this is still one of the best uh, user experience provided in, in that uh, industry. There's one more use case. So iPlan uh, is a will and trust platform uh, only for the US market right now, unfortunately. But it helps you create wills and trusts in a couple of steps. Right? That's the entire product. The first thing that we did with them was to conduct a bunch of workshops to establish a strategy and define it in a very, very clear way. And when you do this, you obviously have a product roadmap, you have a backlog and whatnot. But what we also did was build a UX roadmap because we knew this is a very fast growing industry. There are a lot of competitors. So when you're not the first, you try to be the best, right? So we had a very clear UX roadmap where 
we envisioned what the future state of, our, of the user experience is going to be, and we really crafted it in a way that how many ever features you add or whatever you do to your product, you will still have a great user experience. And lastly, we convinced them to invest in good branding, and we showed them the real value. So when they went to uh, investors or they went to uh, sell this to uh, enterprises as a service, right? They were clearly able to appreciate the fact that this product, although it's new, has a great trust factor to it, which enabled them to buy quickly and buy easily. Uh, just two things I would like, uh, I wanted to show today to establish some, um, some facts based on the experience that I've had and to demonstrate couple of the points that I've covered before in real time. Lastly, looking ahead, uh, again, I would like to highlight the fact that business of UX is not just about helping your business grow or listening to the business or uh, understanding their objectives and goals, but it is about creating good design and good user experience at the end of the day. So don't miss out on that or don't get too tangled up in this web of uh, being business friendly and forgetting uh, what you do as a UX designer. So that's it from me. Thank you and have a great day three tomorrow. Thank you.